On this week's episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, we talk about thunderclap headaches, another episode of Dear Mojo, and special guest in studio, Nuff Said. All that and more on this week's episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Here we go. The views and opinions of Southern Fried Philosophy are not necessarily those of our guests, sponsors, or friends of the show, but they should be. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where two guys take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy, and you, the listener, are getting a degree in common sense. We are broadcasting from the Busted Knuckle Studio right here in beautiful downtown historic Concord, North Carolina. I'll be your host, Biggin, and how about you? We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to the second half of this flaky biscuit, that's right, I'm talking about the pride of Anderson, South Carolina. He is 2016's honorable mention beefcake of the year, the inventor of the redneck egg roll. Give it up on old Mike number one. It's Mojo! I'm not, I'm not sure where the beefcake roll came into, but I'll take it every day, twice on Sundays. Your wife told me to tell you to say that. <laughs> Hold on, here we go, here we go. What is she trying to work up to if she's trying to tell you to do these things, to say these things? <laughs> anyway, she loves you. <laughs> anyway, guys, we appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy. You can find us on the Facebooks at Southern Fried Philosophy or our website at southernfriedphilosophy.com, on the Twitters and Instagram at SFP Radio, youtube.com forward slash SFP Radio. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping tips. If you want to check us out and hang out with us at the Busted Knuckle Studio, just give us a shout out via email at sfpradio at gmail.com and get your very own smoking hot sit ticket seats so you can sit in studio with us. Um, come check us out. Also, you can email us if you would like an SFP hat. If you followed along with SFP Lint, uh, I was wearing that hat just about every night. So if you'd like one of those, you can email us. And I think we're going to charge about 20 bucks for those. And then also we have... Or 40 for the one you were wearing. <laughs> I'll sign it and send it to you for 40 bucks. Um, or any other ones, I'll just wear them around the house for a day and then do the same thing. Or if you'd like a Syrup Life shirt, those are also $20. Send us um, uh, an email at sfpradio at gmail.com as well. And we will get that uh, sent out to you as well. So we'll figure out the payment and all that jazz. So... Anyway, that's about it. I'm going to ask you like I ask you every week. Mojo, how you be doing? You know, it's got my britches on fire. Oh, buddy. I, I know I'm going to take flack for this. Come on. That's okay. Come on with it. Women trying to park. Oh, no. I, I know. Let me also just again say this. Southern Fried Philosophy. Are not <laughs> necessarily those who are Send your emails to mojo at SFP Radio. Yeah, I'll take them all. I'm just kidding. Oh, man. What's In that? a parking lot today. Mm. Trying to watch a woman back into a space. <laughs> it was it was probably three minutes, but it felt like three thousand minutes. It was probably me. Are you sure it wasn't I'm me? I'm sure it was I'm sure it wasn't you. Dude, I'm horrible at that. Young back, lady, prob up. probably twenty to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, she spent about a good three minutes trying to back up, back back <laughs> pull forward back up, pull forward back up. Am I too close? Am I too far away? Just, she, she's not used to backing that thing up, huh? I guess not. But well, also, her. the ones that circle the parking lots. You know, that would be you me. Know those? That would be me. The ones that circle, just so they can get two spaces first. You know, you mentioned uh, last week how us Southerners, we, we want to park like right in front oh, yeah. of the rest, the restaurant or anything like that. Um, but it, man, I tell you what, that's so true because I. I went around like three or four times just trying to find a parking space, and absolutely, that's what it, I do. It, it's uh, when I used to, well, when I designed restaurants or used to design restaurants mm -hmm. more, um, you always had to have a parking footprint. You always had mm -hmm. to count if you were putting a, uh, if I was putting a restaurant in or if I was ha consulting with a client, you always count the spaces for the restaurant. Yeah. You know? So, people here in the South, we're we're just we're blessed to have parking you know we're not cramped up in right, each unless like you get to a major city or, like or downtown charlotte for example down, downtown charlotte i took a, a buddy of mine his he had the transplant at the same time or mm. like two days away from me took him out to lunch for our our little two-year anniversary that that doesn't sound like a date <laughs> anyway um <laughs> your heart anniversary 21 dollars parking for one yeah. hour yeah buddy in downtown charlotte there you go anyway um and of course i had to walk uh, half a mile what but. about this? I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. What if you had a like a shotgun restaurant mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. every parking space was like right at the front, like one line like of a, parking, like a, like a cigar shaped restaurant? There you go. Yeah, I, I'm, 
I'm all for it. You have two entrances. I'm Bam. All, yeah. Easy peasy. No, but we just we love our we love our uh, <laughs> parking here in the south. I You're mean, right about just, that. I don't know. It's just something we need. Something we do. So. <laughs> If if the restaurant if it's too far of a walk I'll forget it and I'll just go to somewhere else. But I'll I'm go t- to McDonald's. I'm telling you, it is crazy to watch people circle a parking lot for 20 minutes because I because like you know I'll I'll go to the Harris Teeters and I drop the the young enough to go run in for me because I'm too lazy to walk in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, also because I have you know dad privilege, <laughs> and um, yeah, just I'll park into a space and then watch people circle yep. and circle. And there's only like six cars deep. <laughs> right. I don't right. understand that. I've never. It's I've never, different when it's you're shopping. You know, yeah. you're like grocery yeah. shopping. But if it's a restaurant, I'm well, I didn't want that that bad. <laughs> I'm gonna go somewhere else. There's there's always a restaurant that has a B on the front door that's has parking very close. What is that? B as in bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is uh, true. There's always that. that there's always that restaurant that has you know questionable health violations mm. that you, you know yeah. parking's readily available. There so. you go. That is true. Like so, Captain D's, I tell you. Hey, hey, buddy. I just saw. Where were we? We were driving back from Cincinnati, mm-hmm. and we were in somewhere in West Virginia, <laughs> Podunk, West Virginia. Okay. Brand new Captain D's. Really. Brand new. Man, I tell you, the one here in Concord. I mean, <laughs> if you want a drug deal, that's the place that's, to do that's where it. you go. Yeah. Because there's nobody there. I'll see you there at nine o'clock. There you go. <laughs> bring bring it's, cash. The only time they're busy Sunday Sunday mornings after that church. That's true. That's so true. Or know. during Lent, everybody wants yeah, to go. During everybody, Lent. Get, everybody get to eat fish. There you go. So how you be doing, man? I'm telling you, uh, you had it a couple weeks ago dealing with the sinuses. I'm dealing with all that kind of junk. I actually took yesterday off and slept for 15 hours straight. Wow, baby. that's a marathon. No doubt. I I could either have chosen to. Um, to sleep or binge watch a Netflix show. So I chose wisely and I slept. <laughs> Feel a lot better today. Um, the wife and I, we're by the time you get this podcast, if you're trying to break into our house, we'll be home. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're leaving uh, tomorrow to go to Kentucky. So I'm going to go see Grams yep. and uh, yep. have some uh, wonderful time with her. So looking forward to that. It'll be good times. Chocolate gravy cheeseburgers. Yes, sir. Looking so forward to that. The other thing, too, I got an email this past week from uh, a friend of the show, John Caparulo, comedian John Caparulo. And uh, he's actually starting uh, to, to headline uh, in Vegas Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays. So he's got like a, a pretty long... Um, stent he's doing man there, so. have, have his name on the big lights of uh, Sin City with uh, yeah. the likes of Brittany and Celine Dion yeah uh, that's some bragging rights right there hey and he was here's here on the show so here's John giving us a shout out hey everybody it's John Caparulo and you are listening to the Southern Pride Philosophy Podcast I, I can't stress enough how good that is okay I mean anything that's Southern Pride has got to be fantastic all right now it's philosophy I mean, it's like it's like smart, but it's fatty. You guys got you. You love this. You love it. Just keep listening. So, uh, thanks again, John, uh, for giving us a shout out. And he was on the show. And you can go back in our records and see what uh, listen to him on the podcast. I can't mm-hmm. remember what episode it was, but um, it was a good time having him on. It was thirty something. Thirty something. Yeah. <laughs> thirty rocks somewhere around there. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Good, good for him. Oh, cap. All right, so we are going to go into some wacky news brought to you web- by Webmerize. If you need a clean, clean crisp <laughs> website, <laughs> give them a call at webmerize.com. Uh, webmerize.com for a clean, crisp website. Yeah, they don't sell cream. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> if you're, you're Asian, maybe. All right, so here's uh, some wacky news. All right, so I'm going to ask you, uh, Mr. Restaurant Cook Chef Man, um, what is the hottest thing that you've ever ate in your life? Are I you? Pro- the- I think probably. Uh, um, I, I remember I, we had the Carolina Reaper chili. And, yeah. You know, for we we would try to make the hot wing sauce and stuff mm-hmm. for the restaurant. Um, a lot of Thai food and Indian food, boy, that that eat you up. That that'll tear you up. That's something that uh, you might want to have a couple gallons of water beside you <laughs> now are you do you like no i, I like stuff? spicy mm-hmm. but i like spicy where you can taste the food right and enhances. I, i'm not the one of these people just Mm-mm. i want to bleed from an orifice no so, <laughs> yeah i never understood where like i like food i like to eat yeah. food i never yeah. want to like go into convulsions after i eat 
That know, yeah, that's that just... or you know have to sign a waiver. Um, right. If there's a waiver involved, I'm out. You you, you can like have a heart attack. I, yeah, right. that's that's not me. That's not that's not the kind of dining experience mm-hmm. that I usually go for. Right. Um, even though that's a good chance at some of these uh, shady wing shot uh, wing joints <laughs> around town, but right. yeah, that uh, that's not my cup of tea. So a man who ate the world's hottest chili is hospitalized with excruciatingly he- big headaches. So. A man bit off more than he could chew when he tackled the world's hottest chili. The so-called, as you said, Carolina Reaper was left with excruciating headaches. Um, The 34-year-old man who was not identified ate just one of the chilies in a a chili-eating contest. Immediately, he began to dry heave, develop intense neck and head pains, um, starting at the back, which later spread across his whole head. It eventually left him uh, tingling sensation and weakness, slurred speech, and dude had what they called a thunderclap headache. Have you ever, like, I've never even heard of a thunderclap headache. Um, I have no clue what that is, but I, I probably could relate to it after a long night of binge drinking in my <laughs> 20s. I think this is worse. This is when, like, the, the blood vessels in your brain actually constrict so much that you, you can't even, like, yeah, you can yeah. barely even breathe. Exactly. And, um, <sighs> I just I just can't imagine the stupidity. And there's mm-hmm. been these challenges online where people you know, have been challenging to do this. So, yeah, I don't know. Yep, I can't I can't understand. Even if you look, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the the Reaper chili, but if mm-hmm. you even look at the picture of this thing, oh, it it, it, lo- it screams, "Don't touch me!" It screams, "I will I will I will burn you once, and I will burn you <laughs> twice." Once, twice, three times a lady, my friend. There's actually a, a rumor. <laughs> there's a rumor out that someone has actually uh, made a or hybrid chili called the Dragon's Breath that's oh, supposed buddy. to be twice as hot what? as the Carolina Reaper. Right now, the uh, uh, um, peppers are measured on a Scoville units, mm-hmm. which is a Scoville a guy named Scoville developed yeah. this, but it's heat units. Um, Carolina Reaper currently sits at 2.2 uh, 2 million Scoville units. So this new Dragon's Breath is going to be 4.4 4 million. Holy cow. Yeah, so that's... Um, Y'all, don't eat this yeah. stuff. Don't yeah, eat that. I, that's, at all. that's something I don't think I'd want to do. Mm-mm. Nope. Um, all right, well, yeah, I'm just going to leave that there. That's crazy. Um, did you have any wacky news? I have one. Okay. Hopefully it's not... Hopefully we didn't duplicate duplicate nope. uh, the stories this week. But anyway... Um, I'm sure people have heard about this on the news, but I kind of caught it late, so here we go. Russian woman embalmed alive after surgical mistake. I saw that. Oh, my gosh. It's not really funny news, but that's Poor woman. Wacky. A Russian woman reportedly died after a routine procedure when a hospital worker mistaken in, mistakenly injected her with a drug used mm. to preserve dead bodies. That is awful. I'm not going to pre- uh, pretend to announce this name, but mm-hmm. let's just say Svet- Svetlana, because that's go. the most common <laughs> Russian name I can think of. Uh, 28 underwent surgery last uh, last month in a hospital in let's just say Russia. Moscow because yeah. I don't know where it is, <laughs> in Western Russia to, to have uh, ovarian cysts removed according to the state-owned television mm. station RT. During the March 15th operation, uh, personnel gave uh, Svetlana uh, what should have been saline but turned out to be formalin, which is contains formaldehyde. Mm. So that is awful. Um, yeah, it only. Luckily, she didn't suffer too long. It only took two minutes. Really? Um, yeah. I thought it was like a long time. Well, her organs hmm. started to cease, and she was underneath Oof. anesthesia. But, man, what a uh, what a mistake that is. No doubt. And I'm not sure, um, mm. what, I'm not sure what lawsuit reform is over there in Russia, <laughs> but holy moly. You better be paying out, Mr. Hospital. <sighs> yeah. I, that, unfortunately, that happened, and that is some wacky stuff. So that, yeah. I already have a fear of hospitals, even though I've been, uh-huh. in, been in a few. Yep. But that's always been one of my fear fears is uh, going into hospitals. And I can relate. I'm telling you, when I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. I was undergoing, they were getting ready to do a biopsy mm-hmm. in my knee because I had cancer. Right. Sad story. But um, I was bald-headed from chemo, so you mm-hmm. couldn't tell me between a male or a female. <laughs> I pull, I pull, they pulled me into this OR uh, at Grady Memorial Hospital, which has been around since, like, 1600s. Mm-hmm. And um, this old anesthesiologist probably – uh, age 90, asked me if my name was Brittany. Oh. I was like, oh, no. My oh, name's Brandon. No. I think you got the wrong file. Oh, no. So luckily at 12, I didn't get neutered. <laughs> <laughs> so that always scares me. Every time I do that, I'll, I, oh, yeah. I, I've gotten to a thing. If I have to go to a surgery procedure, I always take a magic marker and write on my body. So, <laughs> Well, now they ask you 14 times what your name, date of yep, birth. Yep. So maybe that's why. But 
doesn't help you when you like already have volumes to mm-hmm. soothe your nerves. That's so. true. That's true. Um, so I'm a, I'm a connoisseur, not a connoisseur, but I do like some bourbon. Um, but Buffalo Trace just released a very rare bourbon called OFC Vintage Bourbons. And these are from 1985, 89, and 1990. Wow. Um, these bottles of bourbon, the suggested retail price is $2,500 each. Yikes. $2,500. Only one barrel of each bourbon was available with very little whiskey in each. The 89 uh, barrel had 18 bottles, 85 had 61 bottles, and 90 barrel had 63 bottles. So it's very, very rare. Um, I mean, good night. There's nothing that would make me pay twenty five hundred dollars for a bottle of bourbon, unless I knew I could sell it for like ten grand. Well, just imagine, you know, uh, and there will be some high end restaurant that gets a bottle, mm-hmm. so they'll double the price of that. So it'll be five grand. So imagine yeah. that per shot. Yeah. Know, I haven't seen what the size bottles are, but man, yeah. that's that's going to be some pricey liquor. <laughs> Louis the Thirteenth is the most priciest liquor per shot in oh, a restaurant. Really? Well, it was a few years back. Um, so I can imagine what this uh, brown water is going to cost per shot. So yeah. um, it's probably a little out of my price range, though. I remember I, I had some Pappy Van Winkle a ten year one time, mm-hmm. and a shot for that was twenty dollars. And my dad was with me, and he looked at the he, the guy wrote down like how many uh, how much each one of them was. And my dad said, "Was this for the bottle?" <laughs> 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 he has no no clue, but uh, it, it was it was good. It was you know an anniversary special, so. I was, how much? Have a shot. You pay twenty bucks. Twenty dollars was it worth shot. the twenty? Uh, it was, you know, just to say that I had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. So there's that. So uh, that's some wacky news brought to you by Webmerized. Again, if you want a clean, crisp website, <laughs> go check them out at webmerized.com. Again, webmerized.com. So fresh and so clean. When we come back, we will have Dear Mojo, and um, then our special guest will be Nuff Said. All right, we'll be back. You're listening to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Words cannot describe how awesome Robert and his team at Webmerized are. In our time of need, Robert came through for us and devoted more time than expected to help our organization develop our new website. It truly is a blessing to have an individual that can speak to the average person not in the IT world in a manner that can easily be understood. The process of working with his team was painless, and I look forward to working with them for future projects. Our website is spectacular, and I'm really proud of what was developed by Webmerized. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Don't take Stella H.'s word for it and also Southern Fried Philosophies, but go out to webmerize.com, W-E-B-M-E-R-I-Z-E-D, or check out the sponsors link on our website. And if you mention the word biggin in your order, you'll get 10% off. Check them out at webmerize.com for your web services need. All right, we are back. You're listening to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast and we have got a segment we call Dear Mojo, and on Dear Mojo, we basically take the Dear Abby questions, and we ask Mojo how he would answer them and see if he gets it right. So here is some Dear Mojo. Dear Abby, dear Abby, my feet are too long. My hair is falling out and my rights are all wrong. My friends, they all tell me that I'm no friends at all. Won't you write me a letter? Won't you give me a call? Sign be well, that ended abruptly. <clears throat> Probably like, like the segment. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it hit a roadblock. <laughs> Dear Mojo, when I was 70, I started taking drama classes twice a week, and I still do. My wife was against it and insisted that because none of our friends or relatives were doing it, neither should I. As a result, I, su- I suggested we live apart. That escalated quickly. Uh, I brought, bought a small apartment, and I live alone. We see, we see each other regularly, go to the cinema, the theater, visiting friends and vacations. Every now and then, she raises the topic again, saying she feels betrayed, offended, and abandoned, and suggests we stop seeing each other for two or three days, quote, so she can recover from the pain I inflicted on her. Um, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I'm not cheating on her, and she knows that and doesn't accuse me explicitly, but I think she's jealous and distrustful. Signed, Frustrated in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you answer that one? Um, I think both you morons are selfish. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, I mean, you got to think the wife doesn't want him to do this. I mean, sure. granted, yeah. it's kind of odd for a 70 year old to do drama classes, but you know, maybe he wants to be around odd. some fresh young faces to feel alive, you know, instead yeah, of that's true. Some, some crusty old friends that will just want to play Baccarat. What's wrong with Baccarat? Nothing. I'm just saying that's probably okay. what their daily All routine right. is. Yeah, that's true. Um, also, the. Uh, I mean, the guy's also kind of selfish, too, because obviously mm. he moved out. And, he moved out. You know, doing his own Deuce Bigelow Jigelow <laughs> things. I mean, they, it's – but both of them are kind of selfish. I mean, how, how, how many years have they been together, I wonder? I mean, they've probably been together for a few, I'd imagine. Right. In Bulgaria, it's probably legal to marry when you're 12. So That's probably true. So they probably have been married for, real, what, 58 years? Could so, be, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, – both of y'all need to just grow up. I love how he went – for straight from I don't she said I don't think we should do it and he goes well I'm going to move out <laughs> I mean he just went like, straight that was that. The, that was the linchpin that <laughs> held, held everything together and, and she just pulled it out you know, like what I wonder what they've been through what they've seen right Bulgar- I mean Bulgaria was sure. part of it was part of the Iron Curtain of Russia so they went through communism but <laughs> the fall of communism and then all of a sudden he gets he gets a little hissy fit because she can't take drama class yeah I mean come on I can't come believe on. it he, and. You went through famines, starvation, bread lines. Yep. Won't take drama class. But the acting class is out. That's it. I will draw the line at acting classes. Um, I think exactly what you said, uh, dear Abby said as well. What I think is not having heard your wife's side of it from her, you may be your insight may be correct. However, before accepting the guilt trip that she's laying on you, remember that since you moved out, she hasn't invited you to move back in. All right, so here's the, here's our second one. Dear at, dear Mojo, <clears throat> I'm in my 30s, and I moved out of my parents' home 10 years ago. Last week, Well, congratulations. <laughs> That's more than most generations. Well done, lady. Last week, I decided to visit them, and we went out to eat. Dad has a habit of sending his food back to the kitchen. Quote, my steak isn't good enough, or, quote, my food is cold. Could you warm it up? He even does this at restaurants that aren't fancy. My dad has done this my whole life, and he's in his 60s. It's embarrassing for me and mom, and it frustrates the cooks and wait staff. Is there a polite way of telling him to stop this behavior? He takes any criticism personally. Embarrassed in the Northeast. <laughs> well, number one, I can kind of see your dad's point, okay, from, from a patron. Sure. Okay, you're paying good money. You're basically paying double to triple price what you could produce it at the house. Well, most mm-hmm. likely, unless you yeah. go to a fancy restaurant with like Chilean sea bass or the mango salsa. Hey, buddy. You may not be able to do that at home, but mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to you know one of the, the chain restaurants where you're getting some fried scrimps and whatever else, mm-hmm. you know, you're paying you good money that. for this. Yeah. yeah, you're paying good money for this. So I can see his point if it's not hot or if it's undercooked or yeah. it's got a cockroach in it or whatever. <laughs> um, but I also can see... Her point too, where it is embarrassing. There's, if this is a habit thing or, or a, a manipulation of trying to get a free meal, mm. as a former restaurant tour, yeah, that would drive point. me nuts. Yeah, and um, you know, hopefully he realizes that these places don't make top profit off of the stuff. They have a lot of costs associated with it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you just might want to address the the issue with the dad. But I would not probably do it from the uh, from a vindictive point. I would do it from more of a a uh, consumer thing. If you're going to send it out, send it back. Why don't we just stay at home? Oh yeah. Cook a meal. We grab some steaks at the old Harris Teats, and yep. we'll we'll cook those out. And then if you get if you want to send that back, you can blame mom or yourself. <laughs> so, I would refuse to go out eat with, eat, eat with them. Oh fat. yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Abby said, "You are certainly free to tell your father that his habit embarrasses you, but after all these years, you and your mother are not going to change him. R- restaurants are in the hospitality business. If your father isn't satisfied with his food." He has the right to ask that they be served to his liking, and most restaurants will gladly comply. If you are not, you are not responsible for the for the actions of other people, and because of that, you should not feel embarrassed. But I mean, every time going out, I mean, yeah, we don't know if that's you know exaggeration, yeah. by but I'm sure it's probably pretty high according to this. But hey, you know, like I said, I mean, you get what you pay for, so mm. send it back if you don't. But just just stay at home and cook. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. We ended up doing that with my family anyway, because by the time we argued for 30 minutes about what my wife yeah, doesn't is that want. Yeah, not getting any better? I feel bad no, about dude, that. No, like, no, it's not. <laughs> we will sit in the parking lot on in, with an app you know, called Yelp, just yeah. searching for restaurants, and every 26 that I pull, she knocks them all down. Oh. She chooses the ones that's closed on Sundays. That That's just insane to me. All right, and our last one is... Um, 
Dear Mojo, my elderly father remarried after my mother died two years ago. He married an acquaintance who was 30 years younger at the courthouse with no friends or family in attendance. He told this woman beforehand that he was, there was a large widow's pension that he'd paid into for decades that he wanted to give to her by marrying her. She claimed to be in a, quote, unhappy marriage at the time and promptly got a divorce. Well, she and her now ex-husband have, quote, suddenly started getting along just great, end quote. Uh, so she decided to continue to live with her ex after her marriage to my dad, despite agreeing to the, these terms and because th the woman teased him before their marriage. Dad is angry that she will still still won't have, we'll just say, um, relations with him. <laughs> so also upsetting is that when they are out socially, his new wife still introduces her as her ex-husband and her dad as her, quote, friend. Uh, now, we learned that despite the assurances during discussions with an attorney prior to the marriage that she would never exercise her rights as a spouse to any other funds or property. She's asking my dad for a monthly allowance so she can retire since she has no savings. What do we do? Uh, signed, Stepdaughter in Revolt. Hitman. <laughs> to knock out the stepmom? <clears throat> yeah. Wow. No. I, um, oh, 30 I, I, years I, younger. I, 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 yeah, I think I lost you at that half of the, half through, halfway I, through that. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, it's fine, but... Um, I, yeah, it, I probably it, screwed that up. No, 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 I don't think you did. I think my brain, uh, I think the coffee wore off. Basically, on he married a 30-year-old woman, yeah. signed a pension, said she can have it, but now she likes her ex-boyfriend yeah. and her ex-husband. Basically, could have been a ploy just to... Exactly. Yeah, to basically be a gold digger. Um, what do you do? I, I don't think I there's mean, much you can do. I mean... It, you, your father made an independent choice, right? Um, of his own volition. Um, hope, hopefully, he realizes the the folly of his his ways. Um, you know, I actually, I had something similar happen to this. My grandfather, who's now passed, but he was my grandmother passed, and he went for a few years, and then all of a sudden, um, a woman probably forty years younger, whoa, uh, came in the picture, came a knocking, yeah, and. Um, she basically milked him for everything he was worth. I mean, oh, not no. not that he was not that he was wealthy by no Papa. means. I mean, he was mm. uh, he was a, a truck driver all his life and could never hold a dollar. You mm. know, my grandma was mm -hmm. responsible for that. But same situation. I mean, my, my my mom was upset. You know, her siblings were upset. But what can you do? I mean, yeah. um, people quote unquote fall in love or fall in lust or whatever it may be. I mean, they get, you got to kind of let them make their own decision. I just don't think there's anything you can do except mm. maybe try to rationalize with it. I mean, that, that, that's a, that's a tough situation, but, um, I mean, you, you can either do that rationalize or like I said, hire a hitman. Okay. So your advice is hire a hitman. Abby says that there's certainly something you could do. You have some recourse. Your father's lawyer should be consulted immediately to discuss an annulment of this bogus arrangement. Mm. So you could always just hire a lawyer. It sounds like it may have been British law too, maybe. Well, I, I, I don't know they, where this one's in. They said widow's pension, which I don't oh. know if that was a union union thing or um, mm. could have been British. So How about I'm it? just curious. Yeah, just I have curious. no idea. It doesn't say. All right, so that is an episode of Dear Mojo. When we come back, we have special guests with us in studio, Nuff Said. We'll be back. You're listening to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Gospel up in here. Woo! Daddy was a preacher. She was his wife. Just trying to make the world a little better, you know. Shine a light. All right. We're back. You're listening to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. And in studio with us, we have the ultimate host. Uh, Mr. Nuff said, how you doing, sir? Hey, oh, man, I'm great like Tony the Tiger. I clad to God. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. So glad to be here, man. Southern Fried, 
You know how we live. Everything we do in the South is fried anyway. It's you know delicious, I mean? it's isn't perfect, it? Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> See, I'm not fat. I'm actually fluffy. Yeah, you know, I yeah. got you. I'm, I'm picking like a up Pomeranian. What you're when, I, when I get wet, I'm just as skinny as you want to be. You just got to <laughs> use your Holy Ghost imagination. <laughs> See me how God sees me. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, we met at the uh, fourth annual yeah. portrait something at, at the there Care you know, the Wire Pound Cake. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have I, a piece of that, by the way? What? Man, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. I'm still got my tongue slapping my brain from the pound cake. It was absolute fun. It was delicious. There was seven up pound cake too. It was sun drop. Oh, sun, sun drop. drop. There you go. I knew it was one of them drops. Yeah, it was. <laughs> seven up to the drop. <laughs> it was good stuff. It was delicious stuff. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about what you do. I saw you doing some some comedy there, some yeah. clean comedy. Yeah, absolutely. You, you were doing some, um, just some, some oral presentation, mm-hmm. things like that. So tell us a little bit about what you do and, and kind of like where people can, can connect with you. Absolutely. Well, first of all, my name is Nuff Said, the ultimate host. And what I do is just that I believe in comedy. I believe in spoken word. I believe in using your art. So therefore, I am an instrument. I was that kid always told as a child, you know, you refrain from this unnecessary talking on the, on the little report card. <laughs> right. Needs improvement. You know what I mean? <laughs> now we get paid to talk. God is so good. You know right, what I mean? Right. But uh, what I do is I host. I host. I offer comedy, clean comedy. I have a movement right now. It's called Church Folk Ain't Laughing Enough. Mm. And Come what on. it does, yeah, we go across, I go across the U.S. On June 2nd, I'll be in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and on May 26th, I'll be in Charlotte at the Rock Worship Center. May 18th, I'll be in Florida, uh, coastal Florida, doing a show there. Okay. And we got New Jersey, New York on the lineup, too. We just finished the show at Weeping Willow, Amy Zion Church in Charlotte. Wow. Uh, church folk ain't laughing enough. Comedian Julio Hennessy, uh, clean comedian Adrienne, um, I have a guy, Big Win, comedian out of Greensboro. So I take a dynamic team of comedians in in addition to praise and worship leaders also. Okay. So they have a comedic acting experience. So it's like sure. stand up and act funny. So it's like standing up, you know, in church and standing up for Christ and standing yeah. up to one deliver, you know, what we need. And I think a lot, the reality is it's like, we have the right method, uh, excuse me, the right message in church, but we right. have the wrong method. You know what I mean? Right it's like, we, we have the, the life and the, the joy of the Lord and all this stuff. It's like, where's that? You know, what, what was wrong? Everybody look like baptized in pickle juice. You know, so. But that's what I do. I love the host and I love the MC. Um, I, I have a, comedy karaoke show at okay. press box which i'll be at later on tonight okay but uh, yeah that's it man i'm all about just living life enjoying life and it's showing showing that there's another side of life in itself and it's a joyous side mm. so that's how i roll yeah dude that's awesome I, I agree i think that we'll go to church at least when i was growing up and it was a bunch of old prunes that were sitting there yeah. and not doing nothing and you didn't know right. if they were alive or dead right and that you, the only time wake you- up <laughs> wake up <laughs> but you know but you know though when when you have that conversion experience and sp- people around us, mm-hmm. you got to go burn everything. You got to get rid of, you know, like yeah. how many CDs did I take to church camp and burn or crush <laughs> or cut <laughs> right. up? You know, you got to quit watching every, all the, you got to quit watching all these TV shows because they're going to, you know, ruin your brain or whatever. So, so are you saying to burn grandma? I don't know uh, what you're saying. No, no, I'm saying like the music. I mean, you burn grandma if you want to. That, that could be a felony in most wait states. Wait a minute, but... grandma. Wait a minute, grandma. Wait a minute. Y'all done threw me from a train. Now you want to burn me. <laughs> but, you know, you, you have that conversion experience, and you're yeah. supposed to have no no fun in your life, right. no joy. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, I got you. Like you only now. rely on the God to, to give you joy. Like you yeah. can't have fun in humanity. You're right. So. Yeah. God bless. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we, so many, so much of church just seems so dry. Yeah. And also, a lot of the Christian comedians, a lot of them, I mm-hmm. shouldn't say all of them, but a lot are just stupid. Not no, funny. I, yeah, no, I agree corny. with that. I agree. There's a lot of corniness going on. That's unfortunate. You know, it's really, really unfortunate. But like you said, the churches, I mean, I, I, I want energy when I go into a church. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I love Jesse Duplantis. He's a comedian. Man. I love Janai. He's funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jesse have you laughing to your poop in church. But I just think that, man, it's like, I want I want to feel the energy. I want somebody to holler, scream, throw a pocketbook, do something. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. That's yeah. how I feel. I, I think that's one thing is missing, just that energy. Well, I yeah. grew I grew up Pentecostal, so we always had the we always had oh, pew walkers yeah, and uh, people yeah. running around. Yeah. yeah, they run around, they haul off and just go to running in church. There's there's yeah. B. She just lost her hair piece again. They're exactly <laughs> right. I know that I know the experience. I tried to run in a mega church one time mm-hmm. and passed out between the third and the fourth pew. I just laid there until somebody found me. They was looking for me for the rest of the service. They didn't know. They thought I went to the bathroom. I was passed out trying to make it back around. Man, yeah. I ain't got a marathon spirit. In me. I ain't got that. <laughs> I had to stop short of the glory. You understand? You definitely don't want 
want to run. You definitely don't run in uh, Joel Osteen's church. No sir. Uh, that's that's the old no, Houston sir. Rockets arena. Right yeah. there. Right. It's like, oh, her husband's running away. <laughs> oh, she's running away. <laughs> that's right. If you're doing that, you better be getting paid like a couple million for running up and down those aisles. You better believe it. I'm looking like at a tag service. I'm high fiving people going through, looking for little marathon cups and stuff. You know, it's crazy. Christian CrossFit, right there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. And I'm one Jesus and two Jesus and three Jesus. No stretch. Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. wh- where's been some of the best places that you've uh, performed at? That you Walmart. Really- Walmart. Yeah, favorite place. My favorite <laughs> stage of all time is Walmart, man. I just love, I think Walmart's just great. The first of all, the people oh, in yeah. Walmart will oh. crack you up. Walmart. Oh, come on with it. Oh my God, man. I, I I love I just wherever. I mean car washes, but Walmart. Walmart's yeah. by far my favorite. Is it Wal is it Walmart or Walmarts? Wally World. Oh, Wally oh. World. Yeah, Wally World. That's, That's right. kinda like the Target of Target. Target. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah. And Bohine Glades, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but here in the South, we have to drop the S on the end of the stores, like Targets and, yeah. and Walmarts yeah, right. and Kmarts. Yeah, that's right. We can't talk right. proper to save our life. Uh, do you remember what we did back in the day with the Kmart? Remember going to Kmart shopping? Oh, yeah. and mom said that blue light go oh, off. She goes crazy. All of a sudden, everybody freaks out in the store, snatching kids. Let's go. We're it's like a zombie stuff. apocalypse. Yeah, the, the women's yeah, in their yeah. brass knuckles. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> It's <laughs> crazy. I, tell I used you. to work at a car- Kmart. That was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. <laughs> really? I, I hate the that. shoe department. <laughs> Let me find out you got an Al Bundy spirit. That is great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, yeah, dude. Man. So, so you, you mentioned you have a, a pretty regular thing on Wednesday nights at the Press yeah. Box. So, yep. tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, Press Box is uh, a comedy karaoke show. I like to so say all my shows are clean. I believe in offering a service to um, to. I'm a Christian, so therefore mm-hmm. I love Jesus Christ. And with that being said, I use my comment. I don't have to use profanity to get a message across to you. I don't have to yeah. use you know, vulgar tones or undertones and stuff. You know what I mean? Just yeah, to get a, get a laugh out of you. So I believe in living the life and experiencing, uh, like the ultimate experience of just enjoying life in itself. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that's what we do at, um, at Press Box, and I'm so proud of it because it's been going on for a whole year now. Uh-huh. Um, DJ Stacy Blackman from My Old School 105.3 is my oh, DJ nice. for karaoke. Um, and then Tech Nine Movements, which is a team of DJs. There's like 80 of these guys, man. Yeah, they all come on these Tech Nine shirts. This is amazing. This is kind of like reminds you of, of the Matrix. You know, there are like several of them, but they all have these shirts. But they're all really amazing DJs. And so they do it with these breakout sessions where they dance and interact. Nice. But the thing I love about Press Box most is we had all genres of music. So when I get my fans and my friends come through, I call them dope friends. My mm-hmm. dope friends come through and they always do dope things, you know. So they'll do like an acapoco. I like to call it acapoco. Uh-huh. They do an acapoco version. You know, that's something like acapella, same mm-hmm. thing, but just a little, get a little bit more funk and stanking on it. You know, a little southern mm-hmm. fried on it. You know what I mean? I got you. So that, that's what I love. I love that. Um, I love being there, man. It's, it's a good time, and it's definitely a good stage because I get to share. I minister to these people, and I mm. tell everyone, you know, one hand wash the other, both hands wash the body. Mm. This is important to us reaching and working together. Yeah. When you look out on a harbor and you look at it, I look at the safe for the yachts and so forth, some are new, some are old. But the thing about it, regardless of what yacht just came out yesterday, when the tide rises, they all go up together. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's, again, the importance of us working together. We don't have to hate each other. Mm-hmm. The crab in a barrel of, of a spirit. Or if we can go to the Bible, the Pharisee spirit, where you can't celebrate your brother. You know what I'm right. saying? Because yeah. the Pharisees couldn't celebrate Christ, and he came for them. He was right. on their team. Like, oh, what you guys? Okay, <laughs> nope, nothing. All right, no problem. Go over here. You know, so and that's what I'm all about. That's what I love. That's, that's why cool. I love Press Box. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, family place. Yeah. Um, so wh- how did you get started on, I mean, I know you said that as a kid, like that you yeah. got that grade yeah, I got yeah. that same grade too. Yeah. Also the same grade of like, Hey, he won't get out of the lunchroom. I need right. him to leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Oh man, I'm telling you, man. Listen, yeah. So I started off as a kid. I, I did my first, uh, Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King dramatization, which we're just celebrating mm. his assassination here a few yeah. weeks ago. But, um, yeah. So my mom would go to tape city, which was this like old school record store in Charlotte. And she'd give me all these tapes of Dr. King's speeches so I had to learn them you know mm. and then I'd go to church and I'd perform these speeches for the church and oh, wow. which was really cool you know because you, you like you know, I, I became it got to a point where I became overwhelmed or not overwhelmed I said overcome mm. with his with with his passion of what he was talking about you know mm. you follow these words you follow you start talking about the, Parth- the Parthenon and all these other places it, he's just such an elaborate speaker I just love the, the colorful words that he used to illustrate mm. points uh, but with that that's why I started and then from there you know I, at four, age 14 I did my first commercial for athletic and men's name brand before we had Foot Locker, Champs, or any of those shoe stores in Charlotte. <laughs> sure. It was athletic, men's name brand, and shoehorn. You know, that's kind of where you got your shoes and that's stuff. That's ironic, because I also did my first one for Big and Tall. Oh, there you go. I was, so you know I was the tall about. one. <laughs> <laughs> bless God. Bless God. 
<laughs> you took my job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute, but yeah. So that's that's how I started. I did, a, you know, got a contract with Nike, Avia, and Reebok, oh, wow. and myself and two other friends. And from there, we won this contest for Town and Country Ford. But nobody was old enough to drive. Well, like fourteen years old, <laughs> so we beat out all these old guys. I was like, yeah, well, they can't even ride in the car. It's like, so we had to take the second fiddle price. It was like three hundred dollars, split it hundred bucks, and let the guys run her up. They were all old enough to buy a car, but none of their credit was good enough to buy a car. So you know, it was, it was crazy. It's like, hey, my credit is good still, you know. So, you know. Anyway, that's awesome. Yeah, but that's where it started, man, back yeah. then. And I'm a product of Charlotte, North Carolina, born and raised. I remember nice. Concord was like that faraway place that nobody mm. goes to. Yeah. Like, you're going to where? Yeah. Concord? Oh, Lord. You pack a lunch. You know, it's like <laughs> now we just spin in and out of the city like nothing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what's been some of the biggest changes that you've seen since – you're native. None of us. We're both not native. Oh my lord, man! Everything's changed. Everything, like absolutely everything, from wow. the people to the the streets, the sidewalks. They changed everything. The stop signs. There's nothing to see <laughs> anymore. Street it's names like, too. Yeah, the street names. Yeah. I tell you, it's like Chicken Liberal. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. <laughs> you know, the city's changing. The city's changing. It's crazy. Yeah, but everything. The skyline has changed tremendously in Charlotte, and uh, over the past few years. And I noticed. Uh, I was watching um, a WBTV special, and it was like it was kind of like scary because WVT, they, they, all of the reporters came out with this real straight face. It's like, okay guys, we're going to show you the new developments in Charlotte over the next five years. These things are going to happen. And they start showing all these different mm-hmm. like up buildings and stuff. And they was talking about how they're building on top of buildings now going up. That's the new mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. in downtown Charlotte. So it was just really, it was really neat to watch, you know, these things happen. And a lot of people don't know, but there's fresh, wa- fresh water springs under the city of Charlotte. Did not know so, that. So, yeah, there's fresh springs underneath the city, but we don't tap into it. We don't use them. But there are fresh springs where my dad hmm. grew up in a t- small neighborhood called Brooklyn, which was just on the lower portion of downtown Charlotte hmm. um, years ago, of course. But, I, this, you know, things have really changed a lot in the city of Charlotte. One of my favorite places in the whole city to go to, though, is Freedom Park. I love hmm. Freedom Park. So that's Freedom Park is everything. It's just freedom. You feel free. And I love the spring festivals and all of that. Nice. Very yeah, cool. Love the yeah. city. I, I, I lived here 20 years ago before I moved back in Pineville. Oh, yeah. And that was far out yeah. back, you know, back then. Far. Yeah. It sounds yeah. far. Pineville. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's, you know, just part of Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like yeah. Concord. Yeah. Right. And so. now Lancaster and Indian Land, Indian Trail. Yeah, and, which is yeah. a different state. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they feel they feel right. so close though. <laughs> That's exactly right. But you just right here. That's right. <laughs> Come over to our house. Cross over the line. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Pay like, our state you know, taxes. There I you got go. You. Right, right, right. Exactly. That's what they really want. Oh God. We drive a thousand miles just to get cheaper gas, only oh, to yeah. lose right. it on the way back home. But yeah. we still feel good because we pay less. Why is that why is that mentality? Yeah, you know, we have we have the mentality. Yeah. You know, for a while we would drive all the way down to Ballantyne just to get cheap gas. Right, and we're right. Like, but here's the thing, though. You know, your car, most, most compact cars only have 15-gallon tanks. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you <laughs> right. save a buck fifty on 15 right. gallons, but then right. spend three bucks driving back. This is a how, penny saved is a penny on. <laughs> <laughs> this is how my wife would justify it, though. She's like, well, we can go down to Payway because that was the only oh, Payway yeah. back there. We're like, we're going <laughs> right. down there and to eat, and then we'll just get cheaper gas while we're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll so work. That, that's how she justified it. <laughs> I I, I've been guilty of it, too. I've been guilty. I've been guilty of it. On the highway, I will I will nurse the the e sign on the, oh, in the yeah. tank just to get to another place to save four cents. So, you sure. and me, but you and me both. But you know yeah. You, yeah. you're on the dice. But I, but I, I won't drive across town anymore. So yeah, I no, guess I got you. I earn the big bucks now. So I can. <laughs> well, I just get like five or ten dollars at a time because I never <laughs> know too. when my car just won't crank up no more. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> there goes that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. At least you got, at least you got that full forty dollars right. exactly. in the tank. Oh, I'll be so nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I should have put that $40 I could have paid for the tow. Right. No, I'm out yeah. there with a hose. So I'm trying to <laughs> siphon it out, you know. Next, I'm in the ER. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's that's right. crazy. So um, yeah. tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're up to now. Can we, can we talk about, you said last week or two weeks ago you were at, in Chicago for True TV. Can we talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I was in Chicago. It was uh, one of my great friends. Her name is Lisa Lares, um, great comedian, and she was airing her show. Which she gave us some pointers and information on what I need to do to contact them as well. And it's actually called Laugh Mob. It's really funny. It's a new concept with comedy. Um, but what what they offer is they have a comedian and a stand up, and they just basically give their same stand up routine. And while the comedian is telling the story, as comedians often do, we mm-hmm. know that all humor comes out of tragedy or tragedy and humor. They kind of go together, cousins. Mm-hmm. So 
So <laughs> as they're telling, she's telling the story, and in particular, she was talking about her daughter. She told her, daughter, listen, I know you're 12, I know you're born April 27, uh, 1989 or whatever, whatever, which makes you seven, and blah, blah, blah. But no, at 17, but today you're seven. She goes to this whole long spill or whatever, and I know I got the dates and the ages mixed up, but she goes to this long spill, and then she, she goes, um, so when we get to this counter, you know what to tell that man when he asks the question. The guy is, and it's, again, this is a comedian talking, mm -hmm. but the animations of actors, you know, acting out what she's saying. And so okay. the guy, the, the comedian, I mean, the uh, host looks toward and leans forward and goes, so little girl, how old are you? And she goes, well, my mother said, da 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 And she looks at the guy, but today I'm seven. And so it just, show, <laughs> it just shows, like, I think, again, illustrating a point. So mm -hmm. it's one thing, I think, uh, that w way we've enhanced uh, performing arts has been with the illustration. So as me as a singer, now we see liturgical dances. We see mm -hmm. um, different type of illustrations while something else is going on, period. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we bring to the table with the comedy, and that's what Laugh Mob is about. Nice. And again, it was really dope, so I look forward to uh, getting with them with True TV and getting my own segment aired there as well. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Just uh, another question, oddball question. What What do you think the state of comedy is right now in, in America? Because hmm. you know, comedy has changed so much in the last four years. Yeah, you know where um, humor, tragedy, but all self self deprecating humor has has always been a big thing. Um, yeah. un, you know, not politically correct humor. I mean, people you think of Bernie Mac. You think of right. uh, George Lopez, who right. who makes fun of the, of the Mexicans. Right. And, you can't say that. Okay, uh, high, the Hispanics, but you know you, you have that, and now yeah. it's people get so offended at that. Mm. So, what do you think of the future of comedy is going to be, or or do, or do comedians need to hold their line and still put, and push that? Man, listen, comedy is going to continue to do what comedy does, mm. make people laugh. Uh, again, tragedy. We're going to all. Laugh. I mean, when nine eleven happened, it wasn't nothing funny, but after now, yeah. yeah, there's tons of stuff on that. The Pope, again. As as CNN just reported, one of the most powerful, or the powerful, most powerful influential man in history. Oh, you get it, but again, nothing really. But when you put the jokes, Google Jesse Jackson. We just did it this week. Uh, Jesse Jackson, Pope, and Mike Tyson. It was oh, like geez. tons. Can you imagine just that? You know, there's tons and tons of jokes about that. But I, I just, I really think the state of comedy is what it is, man. I think, um, I think that we're in a day and age where in society where things are just so, um, so brutally true and so brutally um, hurtful, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? With, with, I mean, just the thing from bullying to the, the, the Black Lives Matter to All Lives Matter to gay rights, I mean, you name it. You I mean, pick, pick, so, a, pick a topic. Yeah, yeah, you could pick any one of these and there's so much rah, rah, rah and so much negative and, and mm -hmm. just like evil is if I can go there, you know, yeah, evil yeah. energy uh, that's that's fueling and driving these things where we're we're all in a dark room pointing at each other, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I realize that in this dark room we're all the same, right. you know, and that's just that's just it. Until the light comes, when we can see clearly now, I'm not even looking at your differences now in the light. Now I'm looking at you as a, another person, another human being, a person of character, a person of value, a person of substance. So it's, the mindset is different. But meanwhile, we're just all in this darkness pointing at each other, and there's shots being fired across the room, lives being going going up, and I mean this is. No, there's no answer. So, where what does comedy do? Comedy continues to be comedy. Comedy has got to keep the lifeline for us because I mean, just like it was said about the United States of America, when we go through 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 the depressions and these dark periods as countries, the the entertainment industry boosts. Yeah. They they boom. Mm -hmm. You know, the movies and people are looking for an outlet, a way to get away mm -hmm. from the reality that they really don't like so much. Yeah, you know, and, right. and many can't even deal with. So I just think, you know, uh, that when you look at our troops and I think you know, with kids, with my kids that are being that are coming up now, my baby is sixteen, my older kids are twenty three, all mm -hmm. in two in the navy. But when I look at when I look at these children, and I think to myself, my son now has a son, and which makes me a granddad. I just, I, that's cool to me. You know, that's <laughs> that, that, that's just really cool because it's like society, man. One society was telling me as a black male in 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 our city and state. You're not going to make it. But I did. You know, I mm. made it as a father. I made it now as a granddad. And so comedy has been my lifeline to keep me sane. You know, mm. I'm a retired husband, by God. You know, that means <laughs> I've been through divorce. You know what I'm saying? Served three tours. But, I mean, you know, some people look better gone. Don't judge me. But when, when, when you look at it, when you lay it down, man, and I, and I can tell anyone that comedy has saved my life. And as long as, mm. and there are different types of comedy. There's some comics that have that dry humor. Mm -hmm. There's some that have the slap stick, slapstick stuff. Mm. And then you, have, you just have different, different yep. flowers, so to speak. It's your sure. choice. But I think comedy in itself is going to be fine as long as it continues to do what it's designed yeah. to do, make us laugh. Because laughter does the heart good like medicine. We know yeah. That, so. yeah, no doubt. Absolutely.
Yeah, it, and, and the other thing, too, that I'll point out is just because you're clean. I mean, that's so hard to get in it because yeah. it's so easy to go to that, you know, F-bomb oh, yeah, or sure. drop this or drop that to get the laugh. But and, and, and we do the clean comedy or the clean podcast here so because we don't, we don't want to offend anybody. And, right. and we are Christians, too, so we don't want to go that route. Um, but that's so important. And, yeah. And, Again, I love your heart, and I love going to churches and making people laugh. That, oh, I love you that's too, man. amazing, man. Thank that you really so is. much, man. I appreciate it. And one of my newest projects I have is called Picture Pages. Okay. And in Rock Hill, South Carolina, on June 16th is going to be the debut of the show. Picture Pages is really dope because what we use is we take book authors. I have three book authors that I'm going to showcase, and I have a team of actors that are going to illustrate what the book author's book is about, oh, be wow. it a novel, be it an instructional book or whatever. They're going to act that out amongst a, a dining office, like 250, 300 people in attendance we're expecting. Nice. Um, everything's catered, everything, you know, there's food, dinner, southern cuisine, southern fried. There you so go. you got your southern cuisine out there. Um, but in it, And that's going to be by my mother. She's an amazing cook. Miss Pearl, Pearl's mm. catering. You got to get a Pearl I've box. I've actually had oh, Miss Pearl's. That's what I'm she talking have, does about. She have a food truck. Yeah, yeah. Well, she has one coming. It's called Good God of Mighty's. No, I've, I've been <laughs> yeah. to, okay. I've been I've been to Miss Pearl's though. Yeah, so we got. We we'll yeah. definitely make sure we get you right, and I I'll make sure you guys get yeah. to eat. Yeah, please. Because do. Um, with that, I mean that that's what it's all about. I want to bring a different product, but also I want to make sure I'm promoting literacy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They always yeah. say if you want to hide something from a person, just hide it in a book. Mm. You know, so I want that's to bring good. the literacy out, help kids. We have in May. We have a kids segment which my kid actors will act out children novels. Oh, wow. So the same thing. They're gonna be, it's going to be a dinner theater, but it'll be geared towards kids. So we have like maybe Happy Meal boxes or something. You know? Cool. But yeah, it's real nice. But oh, that's, very cool. I'm really excited about that. Nice. No, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. If, you, if you ever need to act out a cookbook, and then oh, yeah. I just eat the food, Sweet. I'm totally down for that. Just we can do that. We can do that. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> very cool. So where can people get a hold of you if they want to connect and have you do be the ultimate host? Oh, sure, man. Easy find. One, you can call me, 347-709-NUFF, N-U-F-F, or 6833. Again, that's 347-709-6833. Or you can reach me out on Facebook. Facebook is Nuff Said, N-U-F-F-C-E-D, space, ultimate host. Just keep Nuff Said together. And you can use the same way to locate me on uh, Instagram, N-U-F-F-C-E-D. So those are definitely sure ways to get me. And, of course, Twitter. When you get to Instagram or Facebook, either one, you can find me. Twitter is Nuff Said, the number four, S-H-O, Nuff Said for show. So Awesome. Easy find, easy find. Please awesome. tell me you're using the uh, picture page uh uh, theme song. You remember that on PBS? Oh, yeah. Picture page, yeah. picture page. Now it's time for picture page. page. And uh, something uh, about go get your and pencils. <laughs> yeah. please, please tell me you're using Dope. that. I wish, but you know what we did before we um, we started with our production? We had to go back and find out if, in fact, there were any, um, if they still had the rights mm-hmm. owns to, to the name and mm-hmm. everything, but it's all dead. So nice. all of that's all staking. Well so it's all so you, us, can, yeah. you can't take that? Down? Absolutely. We can go with it. We can go awesome. with it. Cool. Yeah. I know you got to get out of here. We have a little game that we play 10 and 1. As we're going to ask you 10 questions, sure. see if you can get them under a minute. Do you Excellent. be down to play? <coughs> Why not? All right. Let's go. All right. Pancakes or waffles? Oh, waffles. Best city that you visited? Charlotte. Uh, last show that last TV show that you binge watched? Oh, the, the, into the band the Badlands. Oh, that's my show. The <laughs> Badlands. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> this is going to hurt uh, the most overrated comedian. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you went for a jog on purpose. Oh, well, actually, coming up those stairs to get into this podcast. <laughs> uh, your favorite place in Charlotte to get a bite? Oh, my mama's kitchen. Uh, underrate, the best underrated comedian? Hmm, the best underrated comedian by far, I think, would be Trevor Noah. He's my favorite. Uh, the favorite, the most favorite place that you've performed? Um, churches, and then, like I said, again, Walmart by far. Uh, what is your uh, home church? My home church is New Life right here in Concord, Pastor Tommy Steele. Cha-ching. And uh, last question, what is your spirit food? Everybody has a spirit animal. What is your spirit food? <sighs> My spirit food has got to be silence. If I can get it just spiritually meditating, if I can do that, uh, silence. I don't want I don't want nothing. Else. I want to eat silence. But the food, like what is your spirit? What's the food that you identify with most? Oh, you mean an actual food? An actual food. Oh, I thought you were talking about what I eat, eat for the spirit. Oh, okay. Then. <laughs> well, well, That'll work. All right, yeah, I'm trying to eat less as possible. So my doctor said eat less as possible. Don't take too much air in either because we think that <laughs> part that's probably um, you know getting to the bloated part. But my favorite food, I guess I go with oranges then. Orange. Yeah, I, I like never oranges. had an orange. I've yeah. never heard orange yeah, in I like my orange. life. There you All go. All right. Well, 
there you go. Very full because it gives you that high instant energy. When I, I mean, I grind. Let me tell you this. So mm. I want y'all to understand what yep. we're talking about here. Okay. So I was at Concord Mills. Excuse me. I was at Carolina Place Mall. Mm-hmm. Drop my so wife, my mom off at her. I know. Drop mm-hmm. my mom off at her house when you called me. Yep. So I left there and got here in 27 minutes. That's insane. All right. So and that's from South Charlotte. We're already right. Right. Okay. Right. So in addition to that, tonight I'm about to leave here and I'm going to do a show mm-hmm. at Press Box. Do that from 9 to 12, 9 to 1. This goes to 9 to 2, but I'm leaving early tonight. Yeah, sure. Leave there. I'm in the middle of moving, so I'm going to go pack oh stuff in storage. Yeah, it's going to take me two to three hours to do that. Mm. Then I'm going to leave there. I'm going to go take a nap. Sure. Get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get on an airplane to go to Florida to do a show there. Oh, mm. my Tomorrow, gosh. Stay there for a day and a half, come back here to do another show. So, I mean, that yeah, I got a pretty busy schedule. I'm going to need you to get some oranges to take those home with I you. I told you. Those <laughs> oranges. <laughs> mm. Uh, well, enough said. Thank you so much for stopping by. I know you got to get out of here, so thank yeah, you. Appreciate pleasure, it. Yeah, I love y'all. Out. Like cooked food, I clearly do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And some raw. <laughs> yeah, awesome. some raw. All right, that was enough said. I appreciate him coming out and and spending some time in studio with us. Um, you can check him some of his stuff out at Picture Pages. That's going to be in Rock Hill, South Carolina, at the Well. Saturday, June 16th. So go check it out. You can get more info at 900-292-4032 for tickets there. So um, I think uh, I'm going to try to make it, and hopefully Mojo will too. Um, So that's uh, another episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, please go to Google Play, Stitcher, or iTunes. You can subscribe there. You can give us a like, a share. Uh, give us a review. That's how we move up with the matrix Please. of uh, all these podcast uh, aggregators. You can also go to our Facebook page, Southern Fry Philosophy. Go to our website at southernfryphilosophy.com. Also, the Twitters and Instagram at SFP Radio and youtube.com forward slash SFP Radio. I think that's everything. There you go. All right. And as always, keep looking up. <laughs>